Specialized drinking vessels have been a part of beer culture for thousands of years. They come in many shapes, sizes, and from a variety of materials, but they all have the same goals. To deliver beer to the lips in a pleasing way that celebrates a beer's complexity. Today on Beer by the Numbers, we're looking at some historical drinking vessels, examining different modern glassware, and looking at the future of the humble beer glass. Hello beer nerds, this is Beer by the Numbers. Usually when I sit down to a beer, I'm looking at the beautiful head of foam, soaking in the tasty malt and hop aromas, and feeling the refreshing bite of carbonation on the tongue. But one very important factor that is often overlooked is the vessel that delivers beer to your face. Today we're paying service to the humble beer glass. Let's get started. Until 150 years ago, the beer glass was not even likely made of glass at all. Prior to that, glass was a rare and expensive material that required skill, artisan, craftsmanship. Glasses were reserved for the well-to-do. Regular folks drank from clay, metal, or tar-coated leather vessels called blackjacks. These cups were largely utilitarian as the common man had to get by on meager resources. But that's not to say that the wealthy didn't come up with some flashy ways to pound a few cold ones. Found in a royal burial chamber, the golden tumbler of Lady Puabi was a flashy cup that showed the wealth and status and also paid homage to the importance of beer itself in ancient Ur. In South America, the Sakan culture of northern Peru drank from lovely golden cups. They brewed a corn-based beer called chicha that was central in religious rituals as well as daily life. In the 17th century in Northern Europe, if you stopped at a tavern, you might have seen a large glass called a pas glass. This vessel is a direct ancestor to the modern Pilsner glass and was marked with rings as part of a drinking game. The glass would be filled and each drinker would be expected to drink exactly to the next line. No more, no less. Punishments would be doled out for missing in either direction. And of course, the Germans and Austrians are known for their beer steins. Coming in a variety of shapes and sizes, steins have a lot of personality and are perfect for outdoor drinking. It wasn't until machine-made glassware emerged in the late 18th century that the masses could enjoy beer from a glass. And as glassmaking technology advanced, brewers and drinkers alike sought glasses that would enhance the flavor experience of a good beer. This, however, led to an explosion of varieties of glassware that can be intimidating for those not well-versed in consuming beer. Not that there are many of those people watching these videos anyway, huh? Seriously though, there is way too many varieties of beer glasses out there to talk about in a single video, especially when you add in proprietary glassware made specifically for a single beer. So I'm going to cover a few of the most common types of glasses you'll encounter at pubs around the globe. First, we'll start with the infamously generic shaker pint. They're called shaker pints as they're meant to be used in conjunction with a metal cup to shake cocktails. It was never designed for drinking of anything, much less drinking beer. But bars like them because they're cheap, easily stackable, and have a relatively large serving size. They're still probably the standard beer glass throughout the United States. However, many of the more beer conscious venues are abandoning these generic glasses. Some cousins of the shaker pint are the tulip pint and the nonic pint, both widely used in the UK. The tulip pint does a great job of collecting the foam of Irish stouts and the nonic pint is the English standard as the bump in the middle keeps the rim from chipping and makes it handy for drinking while standing in a crowded pub. Tulips and snifters begin as small glasses meant to funnel the aromas of liquors like whiskey and brandy. However, they were soon scaled up to enhance the aromas of beer. Tulips specifically have a nice inward taper that supports the head of the beer. These two are probably the most well-rounded glassware as they do a great job of enhancing the aromas and heads of beers in almost any style. Tall glasses like a Pilsner glass or Weissbier Voss taper outwards to disperse the foam for styles with stronger carbonation like pilsners and wheat beers. These evolved from tall communal glasses common in Northern Europe during the Middle Ages. Finally, the popular Bavarian Seidel is a beer mug made for small beer like Pilsner, Hells, and Oktoberfest. 
These are the evolution of clay and metal mugs that were made very popular with German drinkers at the time because they could finally see all those beautiful German beers in the glass version. Never before have drinkers had so many options when it comes to glassware, but it hasn't stopped some from trying to innovate in the space. Bottoms Up Beer is trying to revolutionize how beer is poured from the bottom up. Using a seal and a magnet in the bottom of a glass, the system allows beer to be poured hands-free, freeing up bartenders for other tasks. Definitely a unique concept that will be great for bar owners, but I'm not sure how changing the pour technique affects the flavor and aromatics of my favorite IPA. If you had a bottom poured beer, let me know in the comments below if it was every bit as good as a traditional top-down pour. So there you have it, beer nerds, the past, present, and one possible future of beer glassware. So the next time you pour yourself a cold one, remember how the glass might be adding to that experience. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like down below. And if you want to be alerted each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, milk is for babies. When you grow up, you have to drink beer.